In this screencast, we'll work through the derivation for flash tank calculation and show you how we could use the material balance equations with our phase equilibrium XY diagram to do our separation calculations. So let's start with drawing a flash distillation tank. So I have a tank that has a feed, and we'll say that this feed is F, and out of our flash tank we'll have a vapor phase, which we'll call V, and we'll have a liquid phase, which we'll call L. And one way that flash distillation occurs is in which we start with a pressurized liquid feed that's heated and it's flashed adiabatically across a valve to a lower pressure that results in creating the vapor phase and having some remaining liquid phase. Now if the valve is omitted, we could just start with a liquid that's partially vaporized using a heater, or we could start with a vapor that's partially condensed to form the liquid. So for our example later, I'm going to say that we have water and ethylene glycol. So water being our more volatile component, we'll start with some feed composition Z for our water. We'll have some vapor composition of our water in our vapor stream and some liquid composition, which we'll say XH of our water in our liquid stream. So for our material balances, we could write an overall balance that says that our feed must be equal to our vapor and our liquid. Of course, this is for steady state operation. And it could be either done in a batch or continuous manner. Now our water balance, we're going to say that the composition or mole fraction of water in our feed stream times our flow rate of our feed has to be equal to the mole fraction of water in the vapor stream times the vapor flow rate plus the mole fraction of water in our liquid stream times the flow rate of our liquid stream. So the first substitution that we're going to make is that we know our liquid flow rate is going to be equal to our feed minus our vapor. So we can start getting rid of one of our variables by plugging this into our equation. So then we could write the following and bring the feed variable to one side. So now if we want to solve for the mole composition YH, we could divide everything by V. At this point, it's just playing around with the arithmetic to get it into a form that we're going to be more comfortable with. So I'm going to rewrite YH is equal to 1 minus F over V times our mole fraction XH plus F over V times our mole fraction of water in the feed ZH. Now this is kind of a dirty trick, but we multiply everything here by V over F. And lastly, again, solving for Y. So now we have it in the form Y equals MX plus B. So here is our slope. And here is our intercept. So this is our material balance based operating line. So let's use this with some equilibrium data to help us solve an example problem. So let's say we have a water ethylene glycol mixture that needs to be separated and we're going to operate at a pressure of 30.4 kilopascals. So this is our equilibrium data that we have collected and plotted on an XY diagram. So if we start with a feed of water equal to, say, 50%, and we vaporize 40% of it using our flash conditions, what are the compositions of the vapor and liquid stream leaving? So let's take our operating line and plug in some information that we know. We know our composition of our feed, which has a mole fraction of water of 0.5. We also know that we vaporize 40% of our feed. So our vapor flow rate divided by our feed flow rate is going to be 0.4. So we plug that in to our equation where it's applicable. So now if we simplify this, we get an equation for a line. So we have a line with a y-intercept of 1.25 and a slope of negative 1.5. If we plug in a composition of 0.5 for xh, then we get a yh of 0.5. So we have one point that lies on our y equals x line. And now we could draw our line using the slope of negative 1.5 or the intercept of 1.25. So since this is our operating line, and this is our equilibrium line, where these intersect is where we have our solution. So this means that our liquid composition, XH, is going to be about 0 0.18. And our vapor composition of water 
is going to be a mole fraction of about 0.9. Now if you had to determine what temperature we were operating at, you could determine where these fall on a TXY diagram so that you know our temperature. So note that we weren't given any information with the flow rates coming in or out. If we chose a basis, we could calculate those. So you could use this information to double check our material allowance to make sure that it is correct. One thing to note is the minimum and maximum slope of this operating line. When we look at this operating line, if we're at its dew point, then we essentially have all saturated vapor. And our ratio would be 1, and therefore if it is 1, we get a slope of 0. This gives us a horizontal line in which we could then determine what our vapor and liquid composition would be. In this case, our liquid composition would be less than 0.05, and our vapor composition would be 0.5, roughly what we came into the tank with. The same goes if we're at the bubble point. We'd have almost essentially all liquid. In that case, we get a slope of nearly infinity or a vertical line. When we're at this condition, any vapor that would form is going to be highly enriched in our more volatile component, whereas our liquid is going to be close to what our feed composition was going to be at. So when we do flash distillation, our operating conditions will be between these two limits. So hopefully this gives you an idea of where we get our operating line for flash distillation and how you could use that with an XY equilibrium plot to determine some of the calculations necessary for the separation.